When's the last time you went to a throws track me and that baby was run super fast and efficient? Chances are it hasn't happened. There's all this nonsense cutting throws to three and four throws and attempts. What the hell is that? We're gonna talk about how to run the shot put and discus in this video. Check it out and share it with everyone. What's up guys, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about how do we improve running the shot put and discus at our dual meets, tri meets, and invitationals. This is a video I've wanted to put out for quite some time. Every year I go to high school meets and I even go to collegiate meets and I go to open meets and oftentimes the, the events are run poorly. Now, why the motivation here? Now remember, the thing that we do at Airtay Throws Nation, we try to educate more coaches on how to understand the throw and how to train the throw to help more throwers to help the sport. We like to put out content like this to help guide people in the right direction, show videos of the elite throwers to bring more awareness to the sport. And so this video goes right in line with what we're always trying to do. We're trying to help improve the sport. And one of the things that's driving me nuts as a former thrower and a current coach is this move to four throws these meets and invitationals where athletes are only getting four throws it penalizes your top athletes a lot of your athletes that are are developing don't learn how to compete in a prelims format style so i think it's a it's really short changing the sport and especially in dual meets and tri meets i think you should go six throws across the board do your first three, do the reorder for a final, and teach those young throwers how to get those valuable reps and compete in a final. Especially with our younger developing throwers, cutting the throws to three, which is cutting attempts in half, or four is cutting potentially much of the season, you're cutting a third to 50% of the throwing reps. It's an absolute mistake. Now, I understand the reason to go to four. These events take forever. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna talk about that. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the most critical thing about running the shot put in the discus, and that's time. And we're gonna do look at some real simple numbers. Some of you may glaze over. I'm gonna try to go through it fast, put the numbers up on the screen so you can kind of follow along, but hopefully I'm gonna make that make sense. The next thing you do is the officiating crew. You have the head official, somebody marking, somebody pulling the tape through, and somebody retrieving the implement. You have the athletes themselves who need to be smart, understand how to move and keep the tempo of the competition moving. And so the throwers manage themselves and the official manages the crew and the throwers. And of course, you have to be safe and we wanna put it all together to run a faster, more efficient meet. Now, just recently here in Arizona, I was Erte Throws Nation and myself, I was the kind of lead official and we ran the shot put in the discus. We had a 70 athlete invitational. So that was 70 boys throwing the discus, 70 boys throwing the shot, 70 girls throwing the discus, 70 girls throwing the shot. And what did we do? So that's 280 total competitors. We have all of our you know, attempts, basically seven flights of three. We did a prelims finals format. So it was three attempts, top nine go to finals. So in total, we had 948 throws or attempts. This is important. So when you just look at a minute, you start looking at numbers and time is the most critical thing. So let me just recap again. So just so the numbers, cause the numbers start going fast. I'm gonna go through how this all works out. So bear with me. 280 competitors, basically, right? 70 for the boys and girls shot put and discus. So that's how you get that. They all get three attempts. And so when you look at that, that's 840 total throws or attempts. Then we take the top nine to finals. So that was 27 additional throws boys, girls, boys, girls, right? Each event, 108 additional throws, 948 total attempts. Now, if you just say that's one minute per attempt because it was there, you walked in, you measured it, you did it all, right? That's a re relatively normal pace. And then you include 10 minutes of warm up in between. So you have eight flights times four, another 320 minutes. You're talking 1,268 minutes of competition and warm-up time. So we're gonna talk about how all that works. So when you look at it all and you calculate one minute per throw, and this is a big meet. Most of your meets might have 48 or you know 50 throwers. This was a big invitational. We ran it 
start to finish, both flights done in four hours and 15 minutes. Now, look at the math. When you go 12, 12, 1,268 minutes, that's taking our total attempts and warm up time because eight flights, 10 hard minutes for warm up. Officials need to set that watch and give 10 hard minutes. Most athletes will be done within that time frame that's going to be 80 minutes. So that's how we got to that 1,268 minutes of time. Now, here's the thing. When you look at that and you divide that out, so we have two events running at the same time, you're looking at basically 21 hours of throws, right? Because if you say 1,200 minutes, warm-ups, throws, that sounds like, wait a minute, nobody's ever running 21 hours of throwing, but they're running at the same time. So 10 hours, how many big invitationals have you been to where they start at nine o'clock and they finish at seven o'clock at night? Lots of them. Now your 40 person, your 36 athlete, your 48 athlete competitions, it's not uncommon for those things to run anywhere from four and a half to six hours long. Do the math, one minute per throw. So this is why I'm doing this video and this is why the first thing is time. Like I said, I'm gonna talk about the officials, all the things you need to do to run the event so much faster so that we can get six throws. This is about the fight for six throws. We want six throws back. We need meet directors and officials to understand that it's not the length of time, it's how efficiently it's being run. And I can't tell you how how many meets I've been to where unfortunately it is run terribly, terribly. There are some people who are good intention, they know the sport, and they just run it slowly. They run it very subpar. Then there's people who do run it well, and then very few people are running it great. And that's what everybody should be doing, and it's super easy to accomplish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk, now that I've gotten all these numbers, right, I'm blowing your head up with numbers, but let's just talk about it. When we save 10 seconds, basically in a flight, you're saving five minutes of time. Now that may not sound like a lot, but again, when we look at those total number of attempts and we're talking seven flights on prelims, right? So that's seven times four, that's 28 flights you're running and you save five minutes per flight. So 28 times five is 140 minutes just by saving five minutes. That's saving 10 seconds every round, right? So instead of taking a minute, you take 50 seconds. Now, when you take up all those prelims, you've saved 140 minutes. So 140 minutes is roughly uh, two hours and 20 minutes of time saved. That is huge just by saving 10 seconds. So now let's get into it. When you understand the critical nature of time, 10 seconds adds up to two and a half hours, two hours and 20 minutes. So that means 20 seconds of time adds up to four hours and 40 minutes saved, right? Now, conversely, run it 10 minutes slower. Now you're losing two hours, you're adding two hours, and this is what happens all the time. And then I get it, meet directors say, well, what happens? And the guy who's running it doesn't wanna take the responsibility that he ran it like crap or she ran it like crap. And they say, well, you know, there was, you look at the numbers and it takes a minute and you know we're just taking one minute but there's 900 throwers you know it's 900 attempts and they have 10 minutes of warm up and there's another you know three three you know four hours of warm up time you know and they do all this kind of stuff and it's like okay that's not the answer they ran it like trash and i'm sorry to put people under bus because there's a lot of good people out there that are trying to volunteer and help their time but they just don't get how it needs to work and this is how it's going to work so let's do just a quick review the official is going to of course gather everybody in for flight check-in so check in, call the names way faster. Number two, explain the rules and explain never turn your back to the ring. Step three, make sure as the official you explain how the athletes will be coming in and out of the circle during the competition as the event is being measured. Step four, make sure that the guys measuring the thing are moving. Multiple times during my time, I had to tell the guys step up the tempo, time is critical. And the last note, which is the most important is a short meeting with the officiating crew prior to to explain all these things. One, when you measure, mark it. And two, explain to them safety. When the discus is coming at you, where to step. Don't freak out and run to the direction that the, the implement is gonna go. 
But most importantly, explaining to them, hey, we want to have a good time. How many of you guys want to be here an extra two hours or four hours a night? Nobody's going to raise their hand. So how do we do that? You explain real quick the numbers that we've explained in this video. Hey, the bottom line is, is you're going to be saving every 10 seconds with this amount of throwers. Just always take your total number of minutes, one minute times the total number of throws, and then multiply it point by 0.167, that's your 10 second figure. You can pull out the calculator on your phone and you can explain to these guys, this is how you're going to save time. So if you're 10 minutes slower, we're gonna be here two extra hours. If you're 10 minutes faster, we're gonna save two extra hours, two and a half hours, and we're gonna get out of here sooner. That's gonna make a huge difference. So make sure that they're all clear, coach them through that, make sure athletes are being safe, and make sure you're running the event smoothly. That's gonna be the key thing for the official. Now, it goes without saying that you explain the rules. Enter from any point of the circle, exit under control from the back half of the ring. Make sure the implement has landed before you exit the circle step on the ring at any point on top of the circle it's a no mark and then always give the athlete the option if you just threw 150 feet and your second throw was 100 feet and you know it's 50 feet shorter you can opt to step on and foul the throw so that will also speed things up so at any rate that's one of your that's your recap for the official so let's continue to look at ways we're going to save time and better run the event all right, so let's get to the meat, meat and potatoes because if that needed to be clear. That was a hard five, seven minutes or whatever, but this is the problem. It is, it, there is a, t a true time factor. Time management is the name of the game for running the shot put in the discus. It's, it's an obvious, and by the way, you measure the tape right from inside the circle, the disc, you know, the shot put toe board, you do not measure from the outside, you measure from the inside. These are all these basic things that I've seen that screwed up far too many times, and if you're watching this and you're a coach or a thrower, you've probably seen that mistake happen too, and then they're adding two or three inches to every mark because they screwed it up. You pull the tape through the center, we're gonna talk about all that, and you measure from the inside of the ring, because if you step on the outside of the ring, it's a foul. Okay, so let's talk about about that warm-up time super simple 10 hard minutes set your your uh, Apple watch your old-school watch your phone put the timer on it 10 minutes hard minutes call it out as your throwers are going in make sure the athletes stand safely away from the net but when that athlete that goes into the ring should go in with two discs or two or or their shot once that implement is out of their hands and they have no more implements left that next thrower should be already heading in not waiting around BS and in talking they need to keep the temple up they need to understand they have 10 minutes and nine out of ten times the athletes are ready before the 10 minutes is up but by setting that time you set the tempo it's super critical now the key thing is the officiating crew what do you need you need a head official you need somebody to mark you need somebody to pull the tape through and you need somebody to retrieve. Those are generally falling into the rules. And so the guy retrieving runs the discus over to the side. Now, first thing that I make sure that's done, that's a pet peeve. I see this all the time. It drives me insane. Our dumb asses turning their back to the ring and walking out and the official never saying anything. So of course, what did we do at our invitational? Every time we announce and we pull the warm up together when their flight goes together, we told everybody never turn your backs to the discus ring. You walk with your eyes on the circle and whoever's throwing should always pay attention, yell heads up. But the individual getting their disc, so I said that repeatedly, there was multiple times where I said, don't turn your back, don't turn your back, don't turn your back, and there everybody falls in line. I see that all the time and so many close calls constantly. And sadly, all around the country, somebody's getting hit because it's pure stupidity. Don't turn your back to the ring. So the safety crew is, the safety part is in, in, important. Now, remember, the official's job is, when you call everybody, the check-in process. How do you make that faster? You warm up for the flight. Don't have everybody tell you your name and check it off. Call the athlete's name out. Announce, flight one, you're up. Check in. Come over. 
Johnson, Smith, Jones, Alexander. You lay out the name here, here, here. You check everybody in. Then the two kids or three kids that aren't showed up, they'll show up and check in. You get the warm-up going. Do not wait. Do not slow it down by having everybody this. This is how you make the warm-up time. You get them checked in. They start warming up because the countdown timer is going while you're checking in. So that's another way to keep that warm-up time between flights. I've been to meets over the years, and they do a trash. They don't set a timer. They'll sometimes have 15 minutes, 12 minutes, 20 crazy times that are just killing and running the event behind schedule. Okay, so the official's job is to get everybody checked in, explain the rules, explain safety, and this is most important, explain to your crew how to run it. Number one, markers. We were just recently at a meet and the marker, one of my athletes got his throw mismarked because it was well beyond his head. He's standing outside of the sector by 10 feet and it went 40 feet past him. And so this is like a 200 foot plus throw and the guy walks to the mark. He missed the mark because he wasn't in the right area. So rule number one, you tell the marker, you run to the mark, period. You do not lollygag. You do not, you hustle your ass to the mark. That's how it works. So the marker hustles to the mark. The retriever hustles to get the disc, runs it over. And then when the marker is running to it, the tape measure, the guy who's pulling it through, pulls the tape and pulls it through the center of the circle. The official can walk in, get the mark. Now here's the most important thing for the official. You have to tell the, the athletes that are standing, waiting, you, when I say Jones is up, Smith's on deck, Johnson on hold, then when Jones throws or Smith through and Jones is up next, Jones has to walk in with the official and the person measuring and wait. So when they walk and they walk out of the cage area, the next thrower is walking into the ring. So everybody's moving and that keeps the tempo up. We just talked in the beginning about how critical it is to save time. 10 seconds is gonna save two hours, 20 seconds is gonna save four hours on a huge invitational like this, that adds up. This keeps the rhythm up. How is that explained to the athlete? Listen up guys, this is how you do it. You tell them that's what you expect. When we are measuring the next thrower up, you walk up. That's why it's so important for the official to make sure that you're announcing the names throughout the competition. Like I said, Smith, you're up. Jones on deck. Johnson on hold. You have that so the athletes know their order. They can get in. They move in. You measure. You move out. We will also have poor officiating where you see how slow they are. They walk to the mark. They don't hustle to the mark. They don't pull the tape through. It's much slower. It's taking much longer than what we were showing. Guys were running in, running out, and we were keeping everything moving really quick. So again, simple thing for the measuring guy hustles to the mark, the guy pulling the tape, the person, the individual pulling the tape is going to pull it through the center of the circle. So from the mark through the center point of the circle to get a clean, accurate mark on the front of the ring. The official writes down the mark, calls it out, and then calls the next thrower up who should already be in the ring ready to go. And you repeat this cycle. And this is how you start saving 10, 15, up to 20 seconds, especially when there is a no mark, which is going to speed up the competition. Now, the key thing is managing those throwers, like I said, telling them how to come in, which I've repeated multiple times. But throwers, you need to be paying attention and making sure that you know you're up and you go in and that's how things keep moving. Now, one of the key things, how did we, how were we able to finish a competition that was start to finish? We started at 8.45 a.m. By 1 p.m., we had completed all of our time. That, that 948 attempts, done with 80 minutes, you know, eight, 10 minute segments, 80 minutes of warm up, all complete. Our numbers came out to 255 total minutes. We had 80 minutes of warm up time and that left us with 175 minutes to basically complete 948 throws. We were on a super hustle schedule. We kept moving it nice and straight. We explained to our officiating crew, the people measuring, retrieving, and pulling the tape through. If you need a bathroom break, you do it during the 10 minutes 
of warm up time. You hustle over afterwards. You need to get a drink of water. You do all that. You do that during the warm up time. You keep the comp moving. I can't stress to you enough. This is a numbers game. It is as simple as that. It is management. If you are not quick and you do not keep these details together, it's very easy to add time. The same day we completed our invitational in four hours and 15 minutes, we heard that across town, I checked on one of my athletes competing across town at a different meet, and they were three hours behind on the throws. For this very reason, they don't time the warm-ups, the, 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 the officiating crew doesn't understand, they lumber over to the thing, they walk slow, they pull the tape slow, tick, 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 tick. You just add time to the event. I was in an event with two flights of like 13 throwers and it took over two hours. Absolutely ridiculous. It should not take that long. We were averaging just under 20 minutes per thrower. So 30 throws under uh, 20 minutes each time. So even with our warm up, I think with warm up, we were at about 20 something minutes per flight. We ran through it really efficient. This is really great for the athletes. The athletes, right? This is all about the athlete, a good experience. This is how we had athletes who had warmed up and did their final. So if both events, warm up, finals, competition, six throws, and they did both events basically within a two hour time frame because right, the later seated flights, they went and then they went to the final and that's how we did it. Now, here's the real secret on one of the things that helped us. So not only were we super efficient and had everybody running, but we ran two rings and of the discus and two rings of the shot. Now, before you say, well, we don't have that, neither did we. We used to have that, but we set up two shot put sectors because we had a secondary ring and these can be made cheaply. You can make these, you can do kind of the indoor plywood format. So where you can do four sheets of plywood and put a ring on the ply and a tow board. So you can make a ring, put it somewhere in the field and mark a sector. Trust me, you put your lower seated throwers on that flight. You, you can put some simple stuff and we can do another video about how to make a ring, but you can do the same thing with the discus and the shot. And then you can set up those secondary rings. In our case, we had a section that's a training area where there was a 15 foot pad uh, and we were able to utilize an unused area of concrete, hang nets, and put in a nice competition circle. So we were able to set up that second discus ring and this was paramount to keeping that event going. Now, when we finished with both and we had our 948 total throws go through the ring, the Javelin, of course, wasn't even done with their first event. They were running closer to this kind of average of one minute. But if you run at 50 seconds or 45 seconds because of the hustle, because the markers move, the officials teaching, the, the crew, how to pull through the tape, how to mark properly, and how to have the athlete on deck, these longer throws like the javelin and the discus are gonna run exponentially faster. So that is the breakdown, a long video, but this is something that we want you to share with everyone, get it out there. There are really great people who are looking to volunteer, but this is a simple math game. If you've got you know, we'll see every year there's a meet coming up and I'm always the guy complaining because they're screwing two kids out of the final. They're going to take some dumb number like six kids to the final when they're taking eight sprinters to every event or nine because there's nine lanes on the straightaway for the sprints. They're supposed to be matching that for the throws, but they argue they can't add three more throws. You know, so you're, you're, you're shafting kids who are trying to get to qualifying marks. It's not about cutting the number of attempts. It's about managing the throws. That's it. Manage the time and we will get back to a much better run, more efficient meet, and we can get more opportunities for throwers to get six throws. So remember, we want to fight for six. Thank you guys for watching this. We want to get out there, run great events. Good luck to you. We want to see more six throw competitions, which I already said. And remember, be sure if you're looking for coaching information on how to better structure practice, how to learn the throw and how to better train, check out the throwing chain reaction system in the link below and share, 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 and share this video with coaches, athletes, meet directors, everybody, because running the events is the key to having the throws be more successful. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.